Well, um, then I think let's just get started. Um, this presentation is called Taking SEO Seriously uh, within Third Generation Joomla Web Shop. And um, that's of course um, because when you want to, to run a web shop today, it's uh, crucial that you attract uh, not just people but also the right people. Uh, if you want to spend resources on building a web shop, you pretty much want to be sure that someone is buying your products. So uh, it's super, super important. And um, when you look on Joomla itself, you can say that. Um, the foundation for doing zero on Joomla is not good. It's actually pretty bad. So you need to do some additional tools or pull in other components. And in our case, we decided to uh, utilize SH447 as the engine below our work. But um, we'll, I'll get into that a, a bit later uh, as to why we did it and, and, and how we utilize it. But um, basically, I, if I have this in my hand, it's a clicker. Um, this is the a agenda we're going through, like um, a small introduction of me. We're going through a general SEO, then we'll talk a bit about SERPs um, and how you get to the top of the search engine rankings and why. Um, then we'll talk about Joomla and SEO, SEF handling, uh, a bit about Red Shop and SH4 for SEF, uh, the marriage. <laughs> kind of, uh, and then we'll talk about implementation strategies as uh, what pays off working with and why. So then we'll move on to some best practices and case studies and round it up. Um, it's around 16 slides or so, so not so long, but a lot of text. I had no internet connectivity, so I just wrote a lot. <laughs> So, um, but let's get on to it. My name is uh, Ronnie, um, and uh, I'm the, the CEO uh, and main system architect of, uh, of Red Component, uh, amongst others. I do run uh, redweb.dk, uh, redhost.dk, a dedicated Joomla hosting uh, company in Denmark. I got iredhost.com, that's a newer project. We would do the dedicated Joomla hosting, but internationally. Um, and then, of course, got a redcomponent.com, but I also teach uh, Joomla sales strategy four times a year um, in, in an international business college in Denmark. And like 50% of the students that come are web agencies, advertising agencies. So I'm educating my own, my, my own competitors. Um, but I think uh, every time we raise the bar, if we raise the quality of work done, it benefits all of us because the market grows and we need a lot of serious people or people taking things seriously to move on to the next level. So um, that's the short presentation. I did a lot of funny things over the years. I did the first MP3 store in Europe. I did the first e-commerce system in Denmark in 98. Um, so yeah, basically I've been working with this for a very long time um, and, and transitioned over to open source back with Mambo basically and move from ASP and Visual Basic scripting to PHP, etc. So, um, and now we don't even have uh, Windows servers anymore. We only got uh, Debian. So, um, yeah, now it's completely open source. But um, but we do work on Windows, some of us. So, um, yeah, that's how it is. So um, let's uh, dig into it. What what is SEO? Well. Um, Basically, uh, search engine optimization is about um, it's about meaningfulness. Uh, that's the sing that's that's the simple answer or the, or the single word answer. Um, Google and other search engines run an, an, uh, run a company, and that company exists because they're able to show ads to people. But these ads has to be meaningful, so people using the search engines have to find something meaningful, and then Google can place in some other meaningful ads. That's why you have the quality score system of the Google AdWords. So as long as Google are able to provide meaningful results to the people using the search engine, well, then they can show the ads and they can earn money. So, if we understand that as a, as a primary factor, then we also understand how the search engine runs and why it runs as it does. So, uh, no matter how much the algorithm would change for, say, Google, or how much other things change, as long as our primary uh, focus uh, involves um, the meaningfulness, then we'll be on the right direction on the right path. So algorithms can change, but as long as we keep working in the same direction, um, then we're pretty much sure that our efforts 
would would be um, valued highly by Google. So, um, but but to understand how to work with the meaningfulness and also to prioritize uh, the efforts you do, um, you really have to to um, to take a somewhat uh, lazy approach. Um, you can work endlessly with zero, like. Um, some people would sit down on a web shop with 10,000 products and they'd change all their image names and do all descriptions on all their images. And like doing that for 10,000 10, products, that's a lot of work. But you'd get like 0.5% value on each. And I'd say, oh, are you sure that's needed? Wouldn't you rather change the page titles and get up to 40% value? And people go, oh yeah, I think I'll just change the page titles then. So, uh, so part of what I do is I, um, I pick out the most important parameters. And then we look on a website and we say, well, this website is doing like fairly nice. It's on page one on a lot of things. Let's, let's go in and take out the pages that doesn't rank so high and let's work with the parameters that gives the most effect. Then if we move from, say, number 12 to number three, by, by taking out two or three parameters, we're getting a lot of results for very little effort. And basically, that has to be the most important thing you do when you work with zero. Because if you don't prioritize the time you spend on it, you can work forever. And, and your results may not be very impressive. Another thing is, most people come to me and they talk about doing a SEO blocking or a link building, all sorts of external um, endeavors. And I tell them, well, yeah, you could, but basically if your foundation isn't okay, then you can work from here to, to tomorrow or never, and you won't get anywhere. So the first thing is understanding the foundation and then getting the foundation up to speed. So doing all the internal basics and putting those in place is super important. But um, I'll just go through the main parameters right now and then we'll move on. So of course, uh, one of the main parameters when you look on, on the source code, because Google cannot see the full picture of your website, does not understand the creative or abstract value of your website. So Google has to look at the source code and then pick out certain parameters that it's able to identify. Now one of the main parameters is the page title. And on the short term, the page title alone would mean up to 40% of the value. I did some tests at a, at a certain point where I, like when we put up the first uh, red host, the DK splash screen, we had like a, a red host logo, but in the page title it said dedicated Joomla hosting, Joomla web hosting, dedicated Joomla web hosting. And like uh, two days later we were number one in Denmark on, on Joomla web hosting. So then five weeks later Google realized it was an empty page but for the first and the initial work, altering the page title was crucial. So it has a huge importance. Over time, the page title value would drop down to around 10% or something like that, and the content part would be more important. But for the initial work, the page title is the singular most meaningful parameter to work with. And, and some of the students I have that go to the courses, they go home and they start working with the page titles as the only thing, and they go on page one with pretty much everything they do and like the amount of visitors go up ten times and, and they write me back and say, oh Ronnie, I didn't realize it was this simple. But I always say, this isn't brain surgery, it isn't rocket science, it's knowing like five or six parameters and understanding how to prioritize your work with it. So after the page title, there's the page heading and an important part here is that the page heading has to be in an H1 and the HTML code. It has to be a heading number one because Google would look for the heading number one and give it an additional value. Um, so if, when we understand how the algorithm works, we also know which, which elements to use and the H1 is a pretty important one. The page heading would normally uh, be anywhere from like 6 to 10 percent of the value. So it's a pretty big important factor too. Now the third one is the Ceph URL and the search engine friendly address is of course important um, because you can get another 5 to 6 percent value by working with that. So um, another thing is parameter based URLs after the question mark 
the rest of the values pretty much dead in the search engines um, because they don't look on the request, they look on the URI as it's called technically. So they want to see like the structure. So if we have a web shop, we want to make sure we show the category or the subcategory, the product name, perhaps even the product uh, SKU. In some businesses, you would see people searching on Google for the product SKUs because everyone in the business knows the product SKU numbers. So, so those things can be very important to use. And those things has to be possible to work with from in the web shop system. So uh, beyond that, there's the meets the description. Um, some people would ask me, but why don't you write the meets the keywords? But say Google hasn't used meets the keywords for five years, uh, and basically people were abusing the keywords, doing a lot of non-relevant -re uh, keywords, and a term was created called keyword stuffing. So today, if you use keywords and use more than eight keywords, you'd get a penalty from Google for using too many keywords. Uh, more than eight. Eight, yeah. So, yeah, there is. And that's because people were abusing it. What Google does, like, like people who did cloaking pages, a cloaking page is like you do a page with a JavaScript on it, and then uh, people come in and they instantly get moved on to the right page, but the search engine is stuck on the, on the cloak page. So people was doing that, and it's super smart, very easy to manipulate Google, but Google will find out, and when Google finds out, you get penalized heavily, so the domain will be deleted from Google or something like that. But uh, with the keywords, people were doing it all over, like it was something you could do even in front page. <laughs> so, so people were just stuffing in keywords, and Google created a small rule set. So once you go over keywords, you'll get a negative factor, and you're, the, the weighted average, um, the SERPs works like these parameters. Google will do a score for each, like 86% match, 75% match, 68% match, and then they'll do a weighted average based on Google's algorithm. And no one knows the algorithm, it's like super secret, but we understand each parameter and we can see by trial and error and experience, we can see how much value it has on, on the rough numbers. But, but one of the things is if, if you go over some boundaries, like on the content text, if you move over 5% of your primary search words in your content text, then it will start to be negative value again. So, so you could have like, Google's average would be like uh, multiplying the value by 1.8 perhaps, but then if you go over, it'll reduce the multiplier value and it could actually get negative. This is one of the biggest for, for the clients because of the kind that Exactly. But I didn't know about uh, this number of eight. I, in this period, I was saying don't insert meta meta tag keywords yeah. because it's uh, not useful. It could be uh, could be the opposite. But I didn't know about eight. The it, number of it's eight. eight. But but basically. Yeah, um, uh, like um, uh, an easy way to get a quick overview if you're working with SEO is there's a page called SEObrowser.com. You have to give them your email address to get the results. But if you go in and you put in your website, it'll, it'll list how many keywords you're using, how much page heading you're using, your title, etc. And it'll do it in green if it's okay. Yeah, well, it's. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, but. Yeah, yeah, but it's experience. No, no one can prove it 100 percent because. Um, no, I think um, five people know it. Four or five people know the Google algorithm, but the most well kept secret in Google is the algorithm, and and no one will give you an exact answer, because if you know all of the parameters 100 percent, then you can manipulate the search engines a lot more. So so what we work on now is is experience. You do it a lot of times and you see what happens. Like um, in the Danish zero market, I think 98% of everyone teaching zero have, has read a book or been to a presentation or something like that. I didn't. I worked with it for a long time. So I, I don't agree on some things. I think there's a lot of myths and a lot of bullshit. So but I, what I do and what I teach is what I know works. And I've put a lot of websites on the, on the web doing very, very well. So, um, 
some of the web shops we've converted has gone up uh, in income more than 500% in three months. And for a big web shop, 500% is a lot. So it's really important. But I think basically that's part of what I'm working with is I teach people to do it themselves and, and understand that by picking out the most important parameters you can do it yourself because it's not so hard. And basically there's no, uh, we have uh, companies with like 400 employees doing this also. They don't do a better job than I do. Uh, they can't. So, so I don't think it's, it's, it's not so hard to, to uh, eat with the rich or the biggest ones. It's just a matter of, of uh, taking on the right tools and utilizing them in the right way. And you said there is a lot of uh, uh, unknown stuff, right? Yeah. So perhaps a very smart and clever person could understand some streets. <laughs> exactly. But I think uh, like half of the students I have normally at my courses are regular users. Uh, one guy from a company that has a Joomla website and, and they learn how to do it themselves and, and it works pretty well. But let's move on. Uh, after the meta description we got the content and of course on the long run the content is the most important factor. And there are some golden rules like if you want to maximize certain search phrases in your content you want to go between 4.75% and 5.99%. So if, if you have 100 words, you would like that it says uh, like uh, fish four to five times, but if you do it too much, it becomes negative again, so there's a penalty. So it's a fine line, but that's how Google tries to evaluate what we do and see if we cheat them. Um, but in, on the short term, the content is actually not that important. It's, it's like 10% value or something like that, but on the very long term, the content will be more than 60% of the value. But it's because when Google index, uh, indexes the page the first time, it'll take, it, it will only look on that page alone, and so the page title is very important. But then as Google has re-indexed your websites a lot of times, and everyone that linked to your website, etc., it will start to have a much more wholesome view of the importance of one page in regards to the rest of the net. So the weighting of each parameter changes over time, and that's important to know to get the best results. And um, the next parameter I got on is the internal link uh, structure. And, and that's super important and a lot of people don't really realize it, but um, the horizontal navigation is the most important factor on a website when it's search engine optimized. A search engine optimized website means that more than 70% of the visitors uh, land on, on landing pages, on sub pages. They don't come from the front page and down through your website, they go in from the sides. So when you come in from a search engine, you need to have a clear view of where you are, show all the levels, fold them out, expand them, make it very clear for the user where they are, and make sure that the search engine robot, the crawler, can see all of the links when it visits, because it will save all the links it sees, and next time it'll visit all, the, all those pages. And when they if visit each of theirs, it'll save all of theirs and revisit again. So a really big problem is when you do a website, if you do like a, a top menu bar, and, and you have no sub-menus expanding, like then you go in and click, oh, I'll click here, and then you'll be on a sub-page, maybe you could click to another sub-level, but if you can't see where you're going or you don't have the internal link structure that Google can find, then you'll be handicapping your website pretty severely. So the internal link structure is super important. Um, another part of the internal link structure is, of course, um, like we have a small component called Redlinker. If you install Redlinker, you can go in and write a word and then put in a, a link and click save. And in all your Joomla content, it will replace the word with the link to one of your pages. So when you do an internal link structure, let's say if, if I ran a, a website selling used cars, 
Then everywhere where it, where it said, uh, uh, like, a thought, I wanted the thought to point into one page, then I can decide which page has the highest value in Google because all roads would like not lead to Rome, but would lead to my fourth page. And, and then instead of having like uh, 50 pages uh, on 20% on value, 50% value, etc., all of them pointing to one place, I would transfer a big part of the value by having the right anchor text on my link. So it's pretty important because we can shape which pages is the most important ones. Like sometimes when we do web shop, um, if you have like 50 identical products, one of them might be a really good seller, but some of the others don't sell anything. But Google decided to take one of those pages that don't sell a lot and put that in on the, on the best result. So then we go into that page and do a link with the right anchor text back to the best selling product. And over a few weeks or months time, Google would have put that one in instead. So you really have to go around and make sure your internal link structures are built well and there's some logic in them. So, but um, we'll move on um, to getting to the top of the search engines. Um, the importance is, of course, the foundation and the code. As we have went over the parameters, we can see why. If your foundation is done well, then your starting point would be around 60 or 65 percent. So the way to get the road to get to 100 is a lot less. But say, if you use a standard Joomla site, um, it doesn't put out the title from come content in H1s. It, do, it doesn't. Um, it doesn't really got the Ceph URLs. It's parameter based, etc. Okay, so that's 40% lost, five to six percent lost from the hundred. So we're down to like 45. Then there's some other things that might not be so optimal either. So our starting point might be around 20%. Percent is your matching. Yeah. No, yeah. The the way it works is that Google will take your content page, all your content pages, and it will try to do all the the parameters, do the weighted score. And if your score is say ninety six percent, then when Google shows the search engine results, they'll start from hundred to ninety nine, ninety eight, ninety seven, and downwards. So if you have a 96% score, you'd most likely be on page one, unless there was extreme competition. Some business or branches, businesses does have extreme competition. Um, so by, and basically since 85% of all websites or more doesn't have the right code foundation, just doing the right code foundation and automizing your SEO work, as you could do with SH447, is enough to be on page one. In most, in most businesses and branches. You don't really need a lot more than that. But, but to... Yeah, yeah, but that's the business of the branch you're in, basically. Also, another thing is, if you're like, oh, I want to rank number one on cars, yeah, yeah, you can try and work with that. But if your percentages you can optimize your page to like 96%, yeah. you would have to rank up there, disregarding any off-page SEO, uh, yeah, but, but the thing is, like, if, if you're in a market with used cars, um, the competition will be so high and people will, will be using resources on this. So everyone on the first two or three pages are 96% plus. So, so then you got a, a state of extreme competition. And then what, what takes you from like the 94, 95, 96% and upwards is the, uh, the external things you can do. But for 85% or more, you don't even have to do the external work. Just focus on the internal parts. So my, like if you do link building, you can go out and get 500 links to your page and you move up 2%. And if I change like the page title, I move up 40%. So I want to make sure I do the right things first. That would mean that, uh, I'm sorry, I'm asking too much questions. Yeah. That would mean that all page SEO has like a 98% plus uh, factor instead of the off page SEO. If you can climb by changing your title instead of uh, adding on 500 links, yeah. that would mean off page SEO has like a 2% influence on your entire SEO campaign, right? Yeah, it's a bit more than 2%, but, but, but yeah. Yeah, no, no, but if your foundation isn't okay, like if your page doesn't put out the right code, 
you can work endlessly with offside zero, but it won't work because you're too far from the top and you can't get enough. You, can't, you, you can never get high enough. Um, so a lot of people would say, well, should we do like uh, link building, uh, external SEO uh, blocks, do uh, our own link farming more or less, etc., etc., and say, yeah, you can do that, but first, let's stick to the foundation, let's do it right, get the right code out, so we maximize the value with Google. And then if you need to, you can move off to the external stuff, like on redweb.dk, I think we got 35,000 links coming into our site. So yeah, I spent some time on that, um, but but is it super important before you are where you could be naturally or organically? No, I don't think it is. So you have to you have to prioritize it, and if you if you're not having like your page uh, headings coming out in H ones, go to a template overwriter, install SH four four six, and get those five six percent first, and then move to the other things when you need to. Like in some branches of businesses, the competition is very limited. So, so don't go out and spend time on 500 links. Just do the internal parts, they'll be much more efficient and you can sit out in the sun and sip your drinks instead <laughs> and, and get the same results basically. So, but um, what it is about is the ability to handle and alter the main parameters. That's basically what it's about. Um, and also another thing is, well, when I write, I write uh, going outside of the box and long tail is good. Um, I mean that sometimes you want to be number one on, on like cars or used cars. And sure, being number one on cars or used cars is pretty good. You could also run an AdWord campaign and pay for that. But say if I'm selling a, a, a blue a master from 1994 used, I'd prefer that people that clicked on my AdWords were only people who was interested in buying a blue master from 1994. I wouldn't like it if everyone that was looking for a used car clicked on my link, because that would be pretty expensive. So my contact price would be extremely high. So when we go long tail, like normally in business, they say, well, long tail doesn't pay off because 20% of the customers will earn you 80% of the money. But in the SEO work or in the SEM work, doing uh, campaigns, etc., the long tail is the best part because if, if your content reflects all of the niches that's out there, basically, if you have a content page with the used Blue Master from 1994, a content page that's optimized for that. And for all of the other niche searches, yeah, you might just only get like 100 visitors a year, but if you can sell something to 40% of those, then the effort you put in is, is, has a very high value. So, like, a lot of people go after the same few search words, like one or two words in a simple phrase, the very generalized, uh, general concepts and terms, but it doesn't really pay off. The competition is often way too strong and you don't get enough out of it. So basically by going long tail, not only in your efforts, but also in your content structure, you'll be able to attract a lot more people. But we'll get onto that with, with the landing pages a bit later. So. Yeah, next point was the landing pages. Uh, match the content to the search phrase is pretty much what, what, what it's about. So um, we have to understand how people use Google today and, and people now use four to five words. Like a few years ago they used two to three words and they used four to five words because they want something more meaningful. So you need, people will, will sit at home and say, oh, I want to buy a used car, oh, it should be a used blue master from 1994. Well, then they get something meaningful. If they even add their, their region or their city or something like that, so go up to five words in their search phrase, they'll get something super meaningful. And one of the first four or five links they get would actually be a place to buy the, that used car. So people understand that because they want the meaningfulness. So we've got to make sure our content structures is done in the same way. So if, if we know that, that people would be um, looking in a certain direction or, or, or like seasonal based, they would have a certain a theme, like for Easter people would buy Easter things or certain drinks that fits to Easter or something like that. Well, then we can do like an Easter theme. We can do content structures that matches how we know our users or our segments work. Um, we can also use it if we, 
if we have like uh, very different segments on our web shop, and then we can do like uh, in the web shop, it might be as obvious that yeah, you've got a category, but then if we do content, with the content in different categories where we work with this uh, um, uh, making a theme over something and then we write the content we put in four or five products then we'll have like hot spots for certain areas or certain parts of our segments and we can really get a lot out of that so um, also I think a very important thing uh, that a lot of people don't understand is the language parameter and that's perhaps the most important parameter at all. When I sit here and I do a search on Google, I'll get Danish results because my machine has Danish on it and it does that all over the world. If, um, but AdWords works a little more different because if I sit here and I do Google search, I'll get Dutch AdWords if they match. But yeah, yeah, basically due to the GIP, but, but uh, all my searches are Danish and that's because language is a primary parameter. So if you see a web shop that has like three or five languages on the same domain name, you know that only one of them works, one, only one of them will work in the search engines, that's a primary language. All the secondary languages would never do good in, in, in search engine. Uh, because when Google shows all of the results, um, start with 100% etc. and downwards, but they only do the primary languages first. So only when all of the best primary language results are shown, they would swap to the secondary languages. So I've done a lot of web shops where they had like uh, 5,000 product pages in Denmark, 5,000 in Germany, 5,000 on English and 5,000 in France. And they had like a lot of visitors in Denmark and no visitors anywhere else. So uh, what we did was we did a new site, we did the, the Danish version, then when the Danish version was done we cloned it and we, we did four copies, put them on subdomains like en.domain.com, fr.domain.com, etc. And after a bit of time, when all of the new language pages had been re-indexed, all of a sudden they actually started having an income and sales. So understanding the language parameter is super important. But most people say, oh well, I like to have two more languages, but I don't want to do the work of administrating three websites. And I understand that, but basically if you want to run a business doing a web shop, you have to do the work because else it doesn't matter, you might as well not have the other languages. Uh, and of course a side um, effect or bonus is that uh, the products you sell in Denmark won't be the products that you sell in Germany or in Spain or in France. There's a difference also in the mentality and the cultural way you approach customers. Like in Germany it would be very formal, in Denmark it would be less formal and more uh, cozy if you like. So, um, so you can you can do that. There's like um, there's a, a story about Microsoft that did a new website in Poland. So they copied over one of their other websites, and on the front page there was some guy standing around an office working, and one of them was a black guy. But in Poland they don't want that. So someone had gone into Photoshop and and made him white. And then someone from the IT press figured it out and put it out on the net. So everyone was like, oh, you just don't do that. But, but part of the truth behind the story is that you have to understand the culture and the mentality of the market you're in and make sure that you're running in the same direction. It's a horror example for Microsoft, but, but there's some truth behind it that's important. It's a, it's a lesson you can learn from. That's a very good point. I mean, uh, my wife is black, so uh, I couldn't stand it, but uh, all the time when you choose uh, uh, pictures in Fotonia or stuff like that, uh, if you go in the national one, you see that there is very multicultural, yeah. but Italy is very racist, yeah. so you could not imagine to put them in the side of the client a black person or a Chinese person. So this and, and basically... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but 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 you know, <laughs> uh, uh, my, my wife is black, so but I can't afford the, the idea. But, but also, like the clients come to us and pay us to work for them, 
and we got to make sure that they get the best results out of it. And then, yeah, in an ideal world, I would give everyone a hug and we'd be good friends and dance off into the sun, just sunset. But I have to take in the interests of my clients and I have to advise them to do the right thing in terms of their business. And then, of course, uh, thank God, uh, things move forward and things get better, etc. But sometimes you really got to understand it. Like Asian websites has four columns with information, and it blinks, and everything moves. And like when when a Danish people come to an Asian website, they're like, "What's going on?" In for information overload, e exactly. Uh, so so Danish websites are, and Scandinavian websites are like almost empty, one column like three small images, maximum three segments. You would not focus on more than three segments. You would make room for the text to be read, etc. But and I think there's a, a trend where more and more of the web is going towards like the Scandinavian model of a more simplified um, communication, basically. And it makes things easier, because when you're doing a web shop, you want to decide where the customer looks, you want to control their focus. So you want them to be able to see the add to cart buttons, you want to be able to pull them to the cart, etc. But if too many things are going on, you can't really control the focus on the page and you really need to do so. But that's the usability part, that's a different subject than today. So basically, uh, let's... Okay, I'll speed up. Joomla and SEO Ceph, basically Joomla does very poor uh, SEO and it does it like we talked about due to the duplicate content. Like if you don't use, uh, if in Joomla if you have like one article and you link to it from five different places, you would have five different U URLs for the same content so you'd get a penalty from Google for duplicate content. So that's pretty bad. Also the code output of the standard com content is pretty bad. It's not optimized for search engines. So I always do either a template override or I'll use SH404 soft to, to make it better. Also, there's some marginalized controls. Yes, you can do keywords from the meta keyword, uh, but that doesn't matter basically anymore. So we need something more. Um, so um, I think in, in this case, let's move on. Um, and talk a bit about RedShop and SH404 Uh I said why, how, and when. Well, basically, we wanted to integrate all of the controls of the parameters we just went through directly into RedShop. Uh, so we had the, the choice of inventing our own system for it or finding one of the existing systems to use it. And we went with SH404 Ceph as the engine below. But um, it's uh, like a right, it's the optimal marriage, but RedShop wears the pants. So I guess RedShop is the, is, yeah. But, but the thing is, like, if you install RedShop on top of a Joomla site with SH4 for Ceph, then RedShop takes control of, uh, of SS4, for, uh, SH4 for Ceph. So normally, you would control the SEO settings for any component inside SH4 for Ceph, but here it's the other way around. So when you, when you handle products, or you handle categories, or you handle manufacturers, or do the config of RedShop, then you can control all of SH4 for Ceph from RedShop instead. So, um, and that's about, like, all right, give the power to the user because the, the ones running the web shop really needs to have the power over these parameters or it won't be efficient. And like most clients can't afford to buy help to do all the SEO, they have to be able to do a lot of it themselves, so that's pretty important. So, um, and now I have a, a contingency plan. If the internet works, let's have a look, but I think we'll just pass that and move into some examples a bit later. Um, Oh, well, actually, no, let's just quickly take it then, I think. I'll just try to log in to a red shop and see. So this is one of our clients' website. And uh, basically, I'll go down to, uh, to red shop. This is uh, the 1.0 series of RedShop. It hasn't been upgraded to the 1.1 series yet, but basically when we're talking about products, now this is in, in, in Danish uh, because this account has Danish, let me just um, swap it to English. So. 
Oh, like I said before, a uh, red linker. If you want to do uh, content linking, go in, click new, uh, write the word you want to replace, uh, insert the link, do an old value and click save. And in all of your content, we have a certain word, it link onto one page. That's super important because now you can decide which pages you want ranked in Google instead of Google picking one randomly. So uh, it's worth the, the effort. So um, in Red Shop, if you go in and you want to control like a product, um, we'll just move in here, some random product. Then the, the fourth uh, tab inside the product handling is called SEO. And it's the same with, um, with the categories, etc. So say now, this is done automatically because in the configuration we can insert tags to create all the page headings, the page titles, meta descriptions, etc. But now if I want to override the automatic work that's done, I just go in here and I can put in a new page title, click, click save and it'll be done. Um, and, and the rest would still be the automatically done but I can, I can decide what I want to use. Another thing is, like with the categories, if you have a product in multiple categories, you would have duplicate content if each category was part of each self well. So you only want to have one active, and here it will show a drop down with all of your categories the product belongs to, and you can set the one you want to use in the primary self URL. So basically, we put all the settings out to the users, and if you change it here and click save, Redshop will change it in SH447 and it's live right away. So um, it's, it's, it's pretty efficient. It doesn't get easier than this, basically. And that was the point. So, and it's the same for the products, uh, sorry, the categories and the manufacturers. You've got the same SEO tab also. But then in, in the configuration, um, which on the newer sites look a bit different than here. Um, yeah. There is a part to set the, um, the seal. It's been updated somewhat today in the new version. It's a bit more easy to have, get the overview, etc. But basically, have, what you do is, like for products, you want the page title to consist of product name with a separator tag category name, separator tag product name from shop name. So you have a series of tags you can insert. And like if you use the category name and the product name and then you repeat the product name with your like business name or web shop name or something like that, you would have the product name twice in your title and, and then you would come ahead of those only having it once. <laughs> so, so it's small things, but you can pretty much in, in, in like a minute, you can do set up the tags and you've got your own automated system. A and a small uh, side note on that, don't put the company name at first of the title. It's not a good idea, you're wasting the space. Everyone knows the company name, so don't waste the most important space in your zero parameters on the company name. Use it for the product name instead. So that's pretty important. So, uh, but I'll, I would just wanted to show it rather quickly so you can see, well, uh, the, the power is directly uh, at the user. But yeah, as I've written here, product level, category level, manufacturer level, and the configuration options with a CCK style control. So, is it worth spending uh, resources on SEO? Yes, it is. Like I always say in Denmark, and it's a bit funny because now we're in Holland, but I say if you're, if you're selling like uh, clocks, yeah. and you're number one on Google selling clocks, you can do a living on selling clocks. But of course, in, in Holland, you might actually do a good living selling clocks compared to Denmark. <laughs> so, um, it's, a, it's a bit more fun example here. Um, but basically, Red Shop and SH404 is a happily marriage. So there's great love here, um, although Red Shop has the, the pants on. But uh, it will highly increase the volume uh, of visitors. And if you do the content structures, if you actually go for, for the right users to come visit your website, you go for the long tail, you would have a much better conversion rate. Because like, like doing a bad AdWords campaign, you can get 1,000 visitors in, but only 0.1% would buy something but getting the right hunted in could result in a lot higher sales. So um, but let's move on to the next one. Basically, in terms of implementation strategies, then laziness pays off. Don't do the work if you don't have to. 
just do the work that would get you to the result you want to have and then pick up the pages that aren't performing as well as they could. So um, yeah, select your fights. As you can say, uh, don't pick the biggest guy on the block, take the smallest. <laughs> It's easier. Um, and also another thing I like to call spreadsheet, spreadsheet mania is a way to help you control your own effort or direct your own effort. Like start up a spreadsheet, do like five or six columns to start with, like this is the search phrase I want to work with, this is the page I wanted to go to, this is like the category of a campaign of search words you want to work with like this is the page title this is the heading do like five or six columns in the spreadsheet and then as time evolves you'll keep on expanding your spreadsheet you might put in a column for the adwords campaigns you're running to uh, and all sorts of, of uh, parameters but over time like when you come back to certain areas of your website like 18 months later instead of you having to remember what you were doing or why you suddenly have the spreadsheet to support your work so to keep your, your, your focus uh, in the long term strategy doing like a spreadsheet to help you your own effort is super important. Uh, also, I'm, I'm normally I talk a lot about guerrilla approaches, like if, if you're not sure how things work, or how things, like I did something for a dentist in Spain and he sent me a list of his uh, search words and 90% of them were something only dentists would call it. People didn't use the same words. So they told me, yeah, I understand why no one visits your website. They're not dentists, they're clients, they don't know it. So, so, um, so then I said to him, try and, uh, and print out uh, 10 pages with one search phrase on each page and show them to 10 of your patients and, and show them the, the patients. Said, what do you think when I show you this? And then you want the immediate response. And basically, it's not like scientific, but it's very low practical and it's easy to do. Anyone could print out like five or 10 search phrases, show them to the neighbor, show it to some potential customers and get their immediate response. What, what are they thinking? If eight out of 10 people is thinking the wrong thing, well, then you better change your search uh, phrases or your search words. So it's very easy to do, doesn't require so much. Um, then we have landing pages, which is a pretty, pretty big thing. You can do like campaign pages on your site. You can also do it externally. You can do theme pages, blog pages, etc. The important thing is here that all of these pages has to work within uh, the link structure internally or from the outside. So when you send the value around with the uh, right uh, anchor text, you got to have a plan doing that. Um, but then we do something else in RedShop, we do search as a landing page. And with Red Product Finder, you can create your own search engine for your web shop. Um, the thing is, um, it's an arbitrary system, it isn't tied into RedShop, so you can just create your own categories. So if you want some search types for like uh, the temperature of resistance of something, or like uh, we do for client, we did it as a gift finder. Yeah, I want to find a, a gift for her between 100 and 500. It has to be red. It has to be for the summer, something like that. Whatever you can create or imagine, you can do it as a search system. The very important thing about that is when people search out in the search engines, a lot of people will take the long tail or the narrow searches, but no web shops, normal structures with categories and products, which is more of a matrix with, with much more, um, yeah, what do you call it? The, the entry points into the matrix is through the categories. But when you got a search system where you can create your own relations between the, prop, uh, the products, you can do them diagonally or you can do them wherever you want to do them. And all of the competitors don't have that way to create landing pages or internal content that matches 100%. So if you do a product search with the product find on RedShop, you'll get the results out and those will be search engine optimized too. So uh, the Ceph URL will be good, the page title will be optimized. Then you can, uh, you can save the link, send it to the client, or you can put it in a blog post or something like that. And nice and easy, Google will pick up more and more of your search pages or landing pages, basically. And that's super, super efficient. So uh, I don't think I have time to demonstrate it, but uh, it's pretty easy to work with. 
uh, about external efforts, this con content placement outside of your website, and of course there's link placement, uh, there's also link farms. Link farms might be fun right now, but in the long run it's, it's dead. Link farms won't work, and Google already started to pull out most of value from the link farms. So basically, there's a whole lot more needed. So um, best practices is uh, remember the people. It's about humans because humans want meaningfulness. And as long you are doing things for the people, yeah, we might be using the parameters as optimal as possible uh, to, to manipulate Google, if you will. But we do it within the borders. We don't go black hat zero or something like that. And we do it for humans. Because as long as it looks good for humans and it works for humans, it'll have a good value for the search engines. So uh, another best practice is understanding the demand and the segmentation. Like if you don't start off by, by putting up the segments of your web shop, then how can you work with SEO if you don't understand what's going on and which people you want to communicate with? So that's an important factor. Um, we went around the meaningfulness and then the long tail gives better results as we've been in on a few times now. Work with long tail, it really pays off. So, um, also, uh, an important thing, keep all the best content on one page. Like, for years people were doing like blog sites, Facebook, uh, all sorts of things, spreading out their content on a lot of different domains. But in the long run, you want to protect your domain name value in the search engine, and you want to do that by placing all the best content on your own domain name. So yeah, you might be doing a SEO blog site, where you do like one article a week to link home to your main domain, but then you can only do the secondary quality articles on that site. All your best content must always be on your own website to keep your, your own domain name as high value as possible. Um, so like I write, do syndicate, do send out small parts, do use RSS engines. RSS engines is a super good tool. Like if you've got a category in Joomla, uh, use the RSS feed and submit it to a lot of RSS uh, uh, engines. It's 100 times more efficient than using uh, link farms or, or yeah, like link portals and stuff like that. So, um, and send it to, if you send it through Facebook or through Twitter, you'll get a certain amount of small pluses and you'll get indexed a lot quicker. So do things like that. Also, uh, do consider the multilingual approaches by using cloning, subdomains, etc. It really pays off. Um, and of course, use analytics. Make sure you have analytics built in. If you do a web e-commerce website, do the e-commerce tracking. Make sure that if you're using AdWords, you can actually measure if it pays off. Do you earn money on using AdWords? I use a lot of money on AdWords, but it also pays off. So some months I'd use 10,000 euros on an AdWords campaign, of just one month for my own company. So a lot of my clients will go, oh, but we don't want to use like 500 a month or we don't want to use 1,000 a month. And I go, but why do you care about the figure? You should care about if you're earning money on it. If you're making a profit, then the figure can be anything. As long as you're making a profit, then keep putting in money. It was stupid not to do it. But most people, most companies would say, oh, but we, do, we, we, we yeah, we would put out like 2,000 in the budget or 500 in the budget and we'll keep it there. Look on the results, see if the return of investment is good. If it is, use it some more. Uh, and keep expanding that spreadsheet, it will help you in the long run. Uh, I just did three small case studies of uh, the website we visited before, called uh, Trend Bazaar. Um, let's see if we still got the internet, I think we do. Uh, we put this online three weeks ago, and uh, after something like, I'll, I'll hurry, yeah, five minutes. Uh, after three weeks, uh, they had like uh, four or five thousand products in Google after, uh, sorry, after one week, and we did it like three weeks ago. So this is a three weeks old website. And basically, I wanted to, uh, to try and, um, and see, well, how, how far has it gone in three weeks? Um, and um, if it loads, and it should, we should get a live result from Google. Um, right now, I'm starting to doubt it. But uh, it should show around, I think, 5,000 index, uh, content pages indexed now. Um, yeah, now, now it went there. Yeah, which is a bit strange. 
No, it's not. It's just. Uh, okay, I did some uh, examples here. I just uh, took a few random products. Um, so if you see, we took one of the one of the brands plus one of the models, and then number number one and two and three. This is after three weeks. And like out of the 5,000 products, the 4,000 is on page one. And they haven't worked a lot with SEO. They did the automatic SEO setting. Oh, well, I did <laughs> in, in the configuration. And then I taught them how to work with it on the individual level. So they've started to work a bit around on the individual level. But this is basically just by doing the right code structure, having the right foundation, affecting the proper parameters. So it's super efficient. Really, really, really important to, to understand that. So, um, it's just uh, like I always say, well, it's nice to talk, but it's pretty important to be able to practice what you preach, show it actually works. So I always tend to show people that, that things work. So, um, yeah, on this uh, last slide, uh, any questions? It was a bit condensed for 45 minutes or an hour. Big, big subject. Normally I'd spend 15 hours in two days uh, talking about the same, so uh, it didn't get so much hands-on that I would have liked. So, any last questions? Super. So, uh, I'd say thank you for listening.